up my hair loss witchers so I just wanted to do a real quick video today to give you an update on HMI 115 now I made a video about this treatment over a year ago based on animal research and my outlook was skeptical it's basically a prolactin antibody that is injected into the scalp and it inhibits prolactin which is a hormone that shortens the hair cycle preliminary results in macaca monkeys showed that blocking prolactin in the scalp can be a hair growth stimulant now I'm not going to revisit everything I went over in that video, so I'll just link it below. But in short, I need to see a bit more data on its safety as well as its practicality before I am convinced that it will be a viable hair loss treatment. Since I have made that video, there has been precisely zero new data released on this treatment. All we know is that HMI-115 is currently undergoing Phase 1 clinical trials and has been approved to start Phase 2 human clinical trials, and that data on at least the Phase 1 trial may be released sometime later this year. So, why is it that in the past few months, there has been an absolute surge in interest for this treatment? I'm not kidding. Out of all the hair loss treatments that are currently in the pipeline, I hear more people ask me about HMI-115 than anything else. More than pyrolutamide, GT20029, SQ3. I'm telling you, nothing even comes close to the hype that HMI-115 has generated. That is really confusing to me, so I decided to look into what was causing this hype, and I eventually found my answer. It turns out all of this hype is because one of the subjects in the trial for HMI-115 decided he couldn't wait until the clinical data was released to the public, so he decided to leak his own results early on the Tressless subreddit. This got people all excited because this one guy allegedly got good results, and it has made HMI-115 the most popular subject in the history of Tressless, other than using broccoli to cure hair loss, of course. However... For some reason, someone got angry at the HMI-115 leaker and decided to snitch on him to the investigators conducting the trial. The reaction was that the guy got into a lot of trouble, and so he posted an angry response on Reddit, and he deleted his thread on the results he got with the drug. He claims that he was allowed to stay in the study, but I'm not sure if that's true. So... Let me be per perfectly clear here. I despise snitches, and ratting this guy out was a dick move to be sure. On the other hand, though, someone hyping up their results on Reddit when they are participating in an ongoing scientific study does seem pretty inappropriate to me. When I first heard about this guy, I thought that maybe this guy was part of the Phase 2 trial for HMI-115, which is a double-blind randomized control trial. This type of clinical trial is mandatory for new drug approvals because the study design avoids bias. Neither the investigator nor the subject knows who is on the active drug versus the placebo. Anything or anyone who breaks the blinding of a double-blind clinical trial potentially messes up the study, and like I said, at first I thought that this Reddit guy was in a study like that. But it turns out this guy was part of the Phase 1 study for HMI-115 conducted by Dr. Rodney Sinclair in Australia. That study in particular is just a 20-subject open-label trial, so everyone in the study gets HMI-115 and there is no placebo group and no one is blinded at all. Phase Phase 1 trials are just initial trials for safety, and often they are done to establish the best dose to use in the larger Phase 2 and Phase 3 trials that are done later on. They are not meant to establish for sure that a drug is either effective or safe. They are just preliminary trials, which is appropriate in this case because the only other studies we have on this drug were done on rodents and macaca monkeys. So this guy reporting his results on Reddit isn't as bad as if you were in a double-blind study, but it's still not a great thing to do. First of all, he probably violated some agreement he signed not to report his results publicly during the study, but he also apparently was hyping up the treatment, which is an embarrassing thing to Dr. Sinclair and the other investigators in the study. Frankly, if I were in Dr. Sinclair's shoes, I would have kicked this guy out of the study. It is up to Dr. Sinclair to report the results of the study, not some random Redditor. Besides, it's possible that this one guy's apparently good results might just be an outlier like you see with a lot of other bullshit treatments like low-level laser light therapy. Maybe he is the only only one getting these results. Maybe his results had nothing to do at all with the drug. Maybe he was recovering from a big seasonal shed or from telogen effluvium. It's of course possible his results were entirely legitimate, but it could be his results were atypical. It's also possible other people in the study may get major side effects that will make this drug unusable in actual practice. Whatever the circumstances may be, it would be a shame to get people's hopes up like this and then find out when the actual study comes out that the drug is a complete dud. The point I'm making here is that this one guy is not at all representative of a whole study. Otherwise, researchers would just do studies on only one subject. It's important to wait for the full results of a study before getting excited about a new treatment. So... 
Like I said in my previous video on prolactin and HMI-115, I don't think it's likely HMI-115 will be the ultimate cure for hair loss. While prolactin does inhibit hair growth, and while this drug did seem to improve hair growth in a study on macaca monkeys, I don't think that the drug will do anything about the fundamental cause of androgenic alopecia, which of course is the trash hormone DHT. But it might turn out to be a decent growth stimulant that can be used as an adjunct with 5AR inhibitors, so it's important that it gets a fair chance, but I don't don't think hyping up a treatment before a study is completed is a good way to do that. Anyways, it looks like we won't have these phase 1 results until later this year at the earliest, so this drug still has a long way to go. I'll keep my eyes on it of course, but there are a lot of other promising treatments that are probably going to be far better than HMI-115 and will likely also be arriving much sooner. And look. I know, of course, it must be exciting to be a subject in a clinical trial for an upcoming hair loss treatment, but please, please try to keep it in your pants next time and do not disclose your results before the trial is completed. All you're doing is giving other people a potentially false impression about the drug and possibly getting yourself into trouble too. These clinical trials are prohibitively expensive to conduct and it is possible that this leaker shenanigans could have gotten them expelled from the trial, which means they would have had to find another subject, which would have cost thousands of dollars and also delayed the development of the drug. It wasn't right to snitch on this guy, not at all. But this all could have been avoided had he just not disclosed this information before the trial was complete. It's not worth it, guys. So let's please all just cool our jets for a moment and shut the hell up about HMI-115, at least for a few months, and let the researchers do their goddamn job for a change. Don't worry, we'll be able to talk about HMI-115 again once we get some real data on it that we can disseminate and discuss at our leisure. Until then, let's please be patient, alright? Sound good? Cool. I'll see you all next time. God bless.